Now we got the Excel in the following format. I removed the first three rows because they do not contain any information, but let's now complete our data set. So you already saved this in a different file. So for now, I just delete everything that I kind of don't really need. So let's just delete all of this information. And for multiple firms and multiple, I mean like really large amounts of firms. In this case, we have 22,000 observations, as you can see here. I recommend using one variable, a page. If you have a lesser amount of firms, you can use multiple variables, a page, but you need to rearrange the format. So now we will have the symbol on this axis and then the variable by every time step on that axis, on the x-axis. So let's start with a very basic variable, total assets. We call it to, uh, total assets 2000. And let's just get it on a yearly basis to get the easiest possible thing. What you need to do is you need to click here at your fax set tab. Now, if you don't yet have this fax set tab, you need to install the fax set software, fax set app, this one, and you need to restart your computer. You need to restart it before the fax set tab can actually work. If you have not yet logged in, you can launch Fexset to log in over here. So there are a couple of things that you can do. You can start with a pre-created list as we have here, or you can get a new list yourself. But keep in mind that this is not the way you should be using it. If you want one or two firms, that's fine. If you want 10 firms, still fine. But if you want more than say like 50 firms, I would use the screening tool. So let's first start with a very basic scenario in which we have no firms. Then we use the identifier lookup. This allows us to get us this code for every firm. We use click identifier lookup and we get the following screen. This screen allows you to screen for individual firms from a very large set of items. Here it shows you all the possible things that you can get, but we just want common stock. So we remove the ADRs, GDRs and any of the other items. We also only want primary listings and say active firms. You could also remove them, then you can have defaulted or merged firms, but let's just assume that this is sufficient selection for us. So here we want, for example, Apple or uh, IBM. So just put IBM in there, International Business Machines. Then we add the idea. Then we add uh, Apple. I hope I typed this correctly. Apple Inc, Apple US, that's the stock. Make sure that you pick the right ticker. If you already know where the stock is coming from, pick the right one. So usually the least complex name is the best one and in the region where the firm should be. So this is a Japan version. And uh, yeah, it's, it's probably a version of Apple, but then a different listed one or a different version. So I would pick the one in the country where you think is the right one. And usually the least complicated the name, the more Actually, accurate is. So this is golden apple oil and gas. That's probably not the apple I had in mind. And it's from the US. It's a US sticker. So that's probably the right apple. So let's add micro cro, soft. There are just Alcro Micro Corp, a small firm from Taiwan. I don't know really what it is. Um, X, let's see if it searches for a ticker as well. This should be United States Steel Company, but you see it doesn't it actually does find it, but not at the first time. So entering the name of the firm is best, but if you don't, you can use it here, United States Steel Company SX. So you can also search a ticker symbol, but you need to make sure that you pick the right one. And then let's add uh, Boeing, because it's currently under fire. So let's add Boeing. Okay, we have now a couple of stocks in here. What you could also do, and we'll do that later on in the video, is add fixed income or any sort of other items. But let's start off with stocks or equities in this case, because it's just the easiest. Once you've added your list, you add add, and all of the items appear here. So we enter our formula, insert formula over here. The formula sidebar allows you to first select which identifiers you want, and then select the firm that you want. I'm going to do this uh, for each firm individually because it's 
more elegant and easier to use if you know it this way. You can also select all the firms at once, but it goes only up to 25 firms. So if you have more than 25 firms, you cannot use it. So therefore, I use this tool, select identifier, and I only pick this individual item. So I say, give me, as the firm I want to investigate, this item, IBM US. And here I see a whole list of things that I might like, I might use. I've added this as a favorite myself because I'm into this field. But you see here a lot of stuff going on. Firstly, you just see prices, dates, market values, company names, so a lot of, a lot of items. But this is very limited. There's a lot more. The first thing you need to take into account is that these are the preferred or recommended data items. I would say if you're using looking for basic stuff like total assets, balance sheet variables, market caps, click on this so you only get the ones which FactSet recommends you to use. Those usually contain the most accurate and best information. Some cases from a very weird data provider only have a small subset of all data points. So it's best to use these if you do not need something very special. Then you can click at sources and select the source which you want. But this may be a little bit unorthodox. So if you click here and you go to group by source, you see a lot of items. You see currently not too much because I haven't searched anything. But let's search for uh, assets. Assets. Now here we have a couple of items. If we remove this, we have even more. Facts at fundamentals, facts at estimates, facts at ownership, facts at, facts at activism. All of these things contain a lot of information. The regulatory bank and financials, that's a bit of a strange database. It's also not too properly supported because there are no Fs here in facts set. So if we only say the ones which facts set recommends us to use, we get fundamentals, estimates, and ownership. Estimates are stuff which are calculated. I would not go into that. The earnings surprises and stuff like that. Ownership is who holds the firm, but that's also not really the total assets we're looking for. So for the most basic stuff, you go to FactSet Fundamentals. I would always recommend first going to the FactSet Fundamentals and then to everything else. So FactSet Fundamentals, you open it and here you see a couple of items. You could also have done this by a list. It would probably provide you with the thing you need first, but not always. So say we want a total assets. We click total assets and then the following screen opens. If it doesn't, simply right, uh, left click it or right click it, either one of the two, and it opens. Here you have the reporting basis. This is a very weak point of fact set because if you click monthly and there's no monthly information, it will simply give a blank. So it will give 200, uh, like 240 blanks instead of 20 annual items. So it, it, it's not, if it's missing, I'll replace it with the annual variable. No, it's, if it's missing, it's missing. So you don't get anything. So let's now just go for annual. Here you can select the time frame. If you do it like this, they're all dashes over here. It means use one point in time. So I only want the latest complete period. It's now 2020. So that will be 2090 Q4. So December 2019, that's the last annual report. However, I can put the start date at a different point. So I can either select a date with this tool, like I did here, which is easy to do if you want multiple variables and have only a couple of firms, but for now I'll not be doing that. What you could also do is you can click the calendar button and you can click the time you need. So here you can go to next month. If you want to go quicker, you click this twice, and then you can select all number of years. Say we want all information since 2000, January 1st. And we want it not until the same point of time, but say we want it until the latest completed period. This will give us 20 years of observations. So this format looks a bit strange, but these are the total assets of IBM in millions given by this row. Now, this format is not too nice. I want to default, frequency default, we only set reporting basis annual, so just let's say yearly calendar. I want this in the yearly calendar, it's exactly the same thing, but make sure that you do this right. Currency, we could say local, but that would be strange as we also have this Taiwanese firm in there. So I want the currency to be US dollar. It's best for a data set to have the same currency everywhere because you don't need to convert everything by exchanges and stuff like that, and that simply doesn't cloud your time series. Accounting basis, consolidated. This means that it has been checked by an accountancy, Euro and it's okay 
it's usually quite accurate to use and at least someone looks at it without the company just publishing it whatever it wants so that's a good thing to do uh, the other stuff I would just leave as be. so default is probably millions but let's just keep it as it is now if you want to change the order of this thing uh, well, before we do that we click here at definition this shows you what the thing actually is so it is total assets it's units in millions and we have usually annual information for all industries so this is simply total assets in millions for that specific firm because we selected here IBM now here's the formula itself but you kind of don't really need this you can just leave this unclocked you don't need to use this if you click at this item next to the insert button you can change a lot of stuff say I want you to go horizontal I have all my items like this I would recommend doing it like this because if you have multiple firms and you don't do it like this and you put just total assets in front you have a two-dimensional uh, thing going on if you do it like this you need to put the firm names over there and then the variable name over there but I personally like this setup more so you go to horizontal now what you could do is you could add the company names in there but it gives you the company name and then something already there but we already have the company name as we found it in the previous step so that's not by definition necessary item description well we, we know what total assets is so we also don't really need to do with that but it could be useful to add the dates in there so now you get the dates and then the company information and the beauty of this is, is that you only need to do this once because you use the same interval for every firm and if that firm already exists at the starting point and still exists at the end point so you need to pick a firm that survived all the time series you can use this however now you see that slightly moved so if we want to add dates just for this item I'd say we use dates and then we put it actually here and here we do exactly the same the same thing so we add the assets and now we get the dates variable the first row and then oh sorry guys and then we add the right variable in there once you have selected everything you want this goes until uh, this goes into 220 so I insert it now now it gives me all that I need and once it's green it can still move once it's white it's already pasted and it pastes into an array so you cannot easily change this if you need to change something click at it adjust whatever you want and click Control shift enter that's the only way you can do this or press escape if you want to get out if you don't do this you get something like this so I say plus 12 which doesn't really make sense but plus 10 you can't change any part of an array cancel so it simply doesn't allow this now that you have your first variable in the row, you do a similar thing, you add total assets, you do the same thing, but now you get the date twice. And you don't really want that because it obscures the order of your variables. So you remove the date and now it's in the right format. And hey, it's still RBM. That's not correct. So let's just look at this one. I add Apple US and then you see that Apple grew significantly faster than RBM did. And you insert it. Now you could do this for every variable, but that would be very time consuming. What you could also do is, I want to have this for this range of variables. This only works for small amounts of variables. Now you have three variables, I again want the total assets, and if I'm correct, yes, it should show me everything like this. So I insert the whole thing, and now we have our variables that we wanted. Why do you think that these digits are so very strong? Well, we need converted this to US dollars. So probably it's a large currency and then you trans translate it and then because of the FX rate, which is not that precise, you don't get any rounded numbers. But it's also relatively small in comparison to the others, although these are pretty massive firms. So you have this firm, a couple of firms, you have the information, you know how to get the date, you know how to get it for an individual firm without date and for a score of firms. Now I'll teach you how to do it for multiple firms with over the 25 limit because this array is limited to 25 firms. So we now do the same. I remove all of this. I pick one variable, give me this firm, I don't even know what it is. Um, I give me total assets in the same array so it remembers what you actually did if I'm correct. So inputs, the same stuff, 2010 yearly basis, input completed. Okay, so there's no information here. Only, oh, there's just no information here. 
So we know this is 2020. I could have put the date in, but it would have ended up in exactly the same thing. So I say here, total assets. I say there, give me dates as well. So now you have your dates in there. It gives me a red screen because I overwrite the previous code. You need to click overwrite existing data and only then it will give you the existing data. So this firm, not the best example because it doesn't live anymore or it doesn't, didn't live or just it's an inactive firm. But what you could do is if you add a firm in here temporarily without a date because it makes my life a bit easier, I remove the dates, I insert it, still little information, but the code is all right. You can look at this. This is the fact set code to upload the information. Fact sets um, give me this variable, yearly, US dollars, annual frequency, uh, and from this date onwards. And this is total assets. You cannot really play around with this code too much because sometimes the order or the items in here change. So you can't just put FF uh, liabilities or something like that. I mean, that might, might work, but if you go for market cap, then it breaks down. So you should just use this text and slide bar every single time that you want to use something. Now, after doing clicking it, you can copy the code and then press escape to leave it. Here, you can re-enter the code. Now it is without the array, so you can actually edit it and say, I want here number four. Then I press enter. Now it gives me this calc sign, which means it still needs to be calculated, but it's still editable. So before you make this calculation, you click it down to everything. This will take a considerable amount of time. I'm here recording this on a gaming laptop with a pretty good CPU, and it's still taking an amount of time. You should not click anything whilst doing this, because I'm pretty sure your computer will crash. You need to have a strong computer to do this for many firms at once. So don't use a, 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 a very basic laptop. You need to have something more powerful, especially with multiple cores or just at least very strong cores, a good SSD drive. I would not recommend using doing this for many firms at a small computer. For a small amount of firms, it's quite fine. Now everything has been put into place. I'd recommend you save the file. File, save as, uh, put it in downloads or something. So I just call this junk file because I don't need it myself, but at least I saved it. So always save it before you start doing this. And then you can select a number of firms. Say I select myself those 24 firms. I go to fact set, refresh in selection. Make sure that you don't click refresh the, the, the usual button because it refreshes everything and that will just crash your computer. So pick a small number of firms and click refresh in selection. Now what this does is it opens fact set, you get the screen and it puts everything in there. Now this was pretty fast, so you actually see that some firms have nothing, some firms have some information, it just depends a bit. But the strange thing happens is when you pick too many firms. So this was 24 firms, that's quite doable. But in this list, there are 22,000 firms. If you were to do all of them at once, your computer will crash independent of how good your computer is. That is because this software uses Excel and Excel is horribly built for large amounts of data. It simply can't handle it. So Excel has a limit of a million observations this way. So if you would want annual observations of this series, you would have 22,000 firms over 20 years. Say you want annual over 20 years, you would have 440,000 observations that that's like almost half what Excel can handle. That's quite a lot. But if you want, say, monthly returns, stock returns, you couldn't even do it because you run over the Excel limit. So it's therefore I recommend using one variable, a slide, uh, or, or a sheet, actually. So I would recommend, if you have a really good computer, to use about at most a thousand at once. It will take a long time, and it takes almost exponentially longer to run that. So now I have like 137 firms or something like that. I select them, I could oh, actually I calculate this correctly, nice, and then it goes still quite swiftly. But if you use a thousand, it takes exponentially longer. So say I use myself a thousand firms or even fifteen hundred, then it, it it's really about the maximum this PC can handle. And it got eight cores, it's a really good PC. So you see it loads and it's now surprisingly fast, but usually it takes a lot longer. And now it just you'll see the screen for many, many minutes. 
then it will say resizing arrays and then you'll see here what the percentage is but it's not even there so this may take up to five minutes or something like that to run and if you cancel it you'll probably crash the whole program and lose your data so between every retrieval save your data that's the one thing i need to tell you save it save it save it because that's the way to preserve your data i would even recommend to save it under a different name because then you get less errors somehow now it's got past 100 percent and now it's adding everything resizing arrays and now you will see here in the bottom near my arrow in the bottom of the screen you will see how fast it's going but it's still not even pasting in all the arrays so this can take a while if you have 20,000 firms and you need to do this every time it takes a long while it's still running it's still running it crashes 20 times in between then I'd recommend you first use your statistical software to delete the firms that you kind of don't want in here now I'm saving it and 50 50 or crash okay I got lucky it didn't crash but that happens quite often so you need to save this in between and it will be best to just remove the firms that don't have any observations so I don't know what they are but they don't have observations in this time sit this until, until this far so it's best to just remove them preemptively so that you don't have too many data sets I mean if there are no total assets available just drop the firm I would say also these firms they don't have anything they can go away so firm, firm away so clean them first so you have less observations and then do the screening you can have many additional variables so we again copy a list of firms let's just copy some of them over here I'll make a new sheet I added everything in there and then we find for some other useful stuff so make sure that you select a firm and then search for firm items you should not select a firm and a bond or something like that because they have different items I mean, the bond doesn't have any total assets but a firm does so sometimes it shows sometimes it doesn't you don't get the right variables just pick one item so not an index in a firm not a firm in a bond not an index in a bond just pick one category of financial instruments now say I want not my total assets but I want some sort of more difficult to find things I want an ESG rating ah there's nothing really ESG so this doesn't somehow work I remove this recommended item and hey I see some ESG so here's ESG MCS fundamental funds metrics ESG score just put in an ESG score it's probably for one item so you have a lot of items in here and all of them you can use now just click them down you refresh and selection and then it takes a couple of seconds and you find that there's no information it's quite likely because a lot of firms don't have this information but you can just find basically anything that you want by typing it in here so uh, market cap hey i have this very much information from all strange sort of indexes i mean turkey's istanbul stock exchange is probably not my go-to thing for us stocks so i click this one again and it gives me all of these items so facts at fundamentals or prices i would pick prices market level company level just insert the thing there are no market caps here again these are just randomly picked firms and there's a lot of junk in the data set as well you need to clean that before you do this but for the time being you have nothing that's very friendly so it's just there's no market cap this point of time for these firms but you can with this way find all sorts of information now you can also get information on bonds and other items in here so let's look the identifier lookup to just find some random bonds i want to analyze i have this bond here you have the equity tables but you also have etfs uh, you have futures, you have holder information, mutual funds, options, a lot of stuff. But let's go for fixed income. I want to go for corporates, and I have actively primates, I just the primary, and there I click my Apple bond. Apple Inc. Um, this one is to 2050, which I think looks quite funny. But let's just add in a couple of bonds and all of them from Apple. So I add all of them in there. You see, those are probably the same bonds, but they're the same ticket symbol, but a different exchange ticker. So be careful that you pick the ones that you actually want on the right exchange, etc., etc. I add those in there, and then hopefully they'll show up in here. Add in, add in. Okay, so sometimes if you, if you select too many, this, this thing crashes. Let's now go to less than 50. Add in, also doesn't work. So we have no bonds. Sometimes this thing crashes. So again, to equities, no equities, fixed income, 
Corporus, uh, IBM, big IBM, Blanco, IBM. Uh, I have, or we can go Ford, Ford 2030. I'll add that thing in there and I'll move here. I click OK. This was the thing I didn't do last time. So you add them, then you click OK. Then there is a bond ticker in here. Now you again go to the formula, you remove the item, you add the thing in here. You could also search here for Ford, but it's easier because now you know that you have a bond. But if you search for market cap, you're going to go search for a market cap on a bond. And that's not really accurate. So say I want to have the duration of the bond on this thing, and then I have a lot of durations. So this could be the duration of the bond. And now this bond didn't exist then, but maybe runs until V, so say I insert this, I get myself the duration of the bond. So this item has apparently no information, but you should just click and find the one until you actually get it. So you can here select your bonds and you can select different information for different items. So this one should have duration information. If I go back to here and I again copy my Boeing item and I say uh, give, me, uh, give me again Boeing please and um, delete this and give me duration or something it, 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 it doesn't do anything so if you add multiple items in there it doesn't work out the way you, sh you want it to so you can here search for indexes for bonds for equities but you should put them separately because they're not the same thing I would recommend if you use a number of items that is as large as 20,000 use one sheet an Excel file so you should have multiple Excel files because otherwise it crashes if you fill up this whole thing with information the, the, the size of the file will get so large that Excel can't handle it anymore it's very unfortunate but that's the limitation that you have when using Excel so I would not recommend using multiple items like I did here on one sheet it's just for illustration purposes but use one item like total assets total liabilities total debt whatever uh, per screen and this is the basics that I wanted to tell you, talk to you about. So now you know how to get your statics. Now you know how to get the time series information. You can simply merge the two on this code. That's the beauty of having this code in there because it links to your these variables and to your statics. So the time series and the static variables, you can link them via this variable or via the name, but you need to get lucky on this. So best is just to use these. And once you have the proper variable, then you look for it. Here you also see some errors in here, so make sure that you remove the duplicates. Those terms look the same. They are not the same, but they have the same code, so make sure that you have also an ISIN that you can compare to if they're duplicates and stuff like that. So make sure that you don't mess up uh, any of the calculations over here. Um, this is the most important thing that I wanted to teach you about FactSet. So now you know for large databases how to get your statics, your identifiers, industry variables country it's very easy you just export them on the file you don't need to do this for all of your firms over the time series and you know how to get your accounting your markets variables and your basically anything else you would possibly need from FactSet. so this is the way to do it for larger sample sets if you want to go for individual items you could probably just go to the FactSet server here i hope i'm still logged in let's take like gets to take a second so commodities and securities and then you can just search whatever i want to have apple apple inc and then i get the information for apple so this is for one individual variable one individual firm in this case but it might be a lot easier if you would do this for other items so apple increased in price absolutely is a many much but the thing is that um you could use this for individual variables but doing this for all of them in every single period of time you would go nuts it would just take too much time so therefore you need the screening over here and the excel combination thank you all for listening